Look at that. Got a fellow Kubota working in the background. Beautiful day. All right, tractor people, welcome back. Decided a couple of days ago talking on a forum that uh, some people were having some issues with their auto connecting of the uh, Swift Aft loaders. Uh, this is a 435, as you can see there. Uh, a couple of little adjustments that need to be done on this. So uh, I'm going to go through this step by step. And uh, it actually works really good once it's properly adjusted. Just needs a bit of love and, and a bit of uh, adjustment. So we're going to do that again. And uh, stick around. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy way out of adjustment. So I'm going to do the two adjustment bolts. And uh, that one was already out of adjustment, but this one now is out of adjustment. So my bucket is fully, fully tilted out. That's the first thing you got to do is make sure your bucket is fully tilted. And then what you got to do is you got to unlock your loader. So, uh, sorry, not that one, this guy. So this guy's up, it's gotta be all the way down. <clears throat> so a couple of things I noticed while doing this, while doing the prep for this video, is that uh, the, um, the bolts here were loose. So this little nut was loose and this bolt was just dangling around. Same thing as this guy. And they were also bent down a little bit. So I grabbed my big pliers and I straightened them out, straightened it out. So now I've got a good horizontal surface on both sides. And that's going to make a big difference. So that's the first thing. Make sure these bolts are tight and straight. That will make a huge, huge, huge difference. Now, these adjustment bolts here, <clears throat> they're on a carriage bolt on the other side and they're on a slider. I'm going to show you here how this works. So the slider has to come in contact with the block here when your bucket is fully, fully uh, tipped over. So if this isn't in good position like it is right now, uh, what's going to happen, I'm going to show you, is that uh, you lift up and the arms are, are, are not engaging. So let me just give a bit of oomph to these guys here. And I think this is where most people are having the issue, is that the arms... Are just not engaging. Start her up. Adjust them. I'm gonna throw my trusty old GoPro here. I need a, a magnetic base for this thing. If anybody knows where a good magnetic base for a GoPro is to be found, let me know. Okay, first thing loosen and because I'm doing this myself, I'm going to use a good old bungee cord. Bring her up. So she's in position. And the last thing I need is a screwdriver. Let me show you why here. Here we go. <clears throat> so the lever has to be in contact with that piece. So you gotta shove this guy down like this and you're good to go. So as you're tightening it, you have to make sure that that's still in place. Let me put you guys in position here. So it can move as you're tightening it. So just uh, keep a bit of pressure. And uh, this, this is a, um, Bungee cord's kind of fighting against me a little bit here. <coughs> this is a simple little adjustment. Just 
Show you guys again. So now I've got good contact here, which is exactly what I want. I don't want this any further. I want that to be able to slide back in. And I've got perfect contact over here. So I'm going to do the other side now. Hey, these suction cups are not the best. <clears throat> All right, it doesn't have to be on there like Hercules. Push the piece down. Oh, actually that bolt's tight, so I can't. Push the piece down. <clears throat> Give her a bit of love. All right, so now as I take the bungee cord off, the piece is gonna stay up. And now we can engage it. Switch back to the seat and show you how it looks from the operator's point of view. Black smoke warning. Should be pretty good angle. So I've heard a couple of guys talking about, or read, or heard, or whatever, uh, that their loaders were uncoupling uh, by themselves when they were doing some heavy work. So this probably happens, I'm guessing this probably happens very early on in the loader's life. And uh, since I did my own install here, I actually have a video coming out of that fairly soon. Um, I had a chance to play around with these guys quite a bit and get to... Uh, get some uh, intimate time with them. So these levers, they go around and uh, catch on to the thingamabob right there. And the bottom piece goes in. This is actually really well, well designed. Uh, it, it's really good. But the first couple of times you put it on, what's gonna happen is you got paint on all these surfaces and, and the bolts and the pins and everything. 
and, and it, it kind of doesn't want to go in properly so the first time I actually put it on um, it didn't go on and, and the loader was uncoupling by itself now if you read the manual it actually says or if you follow the uh, the videos it says when you um, click it back on you have to hear two distinctive clicks so that would be a distinctive click what sometimes will happen is it's just kind of way there it, it, and it's hard to see like if it's just there you don't know if it's on or not and uh, you got to keep in mind that it has to be all the way down if it's not then when you're going to be working with your loader this is what can flip up or flip out a person could <clears throat> if you wanted to if you were so inclined a person could put a pin here and then this would be a non uh, quick disconnect loader i mean you just take the pin off and then do your thing and i might actually look into that because this will wear out over time and, and uh, cause issues so th there is a pin that you can go on both sides same thing with the other side Whew, got a bit of smoke in here and open a window <coughs> oh they are open Alrighty then so you can put a pin here and uh, actually, wait a second here. Do you do do do? Oh no, that's not right. So with a tiny bushing and a pin, um, do some homework on that someday and try to figure out what pin would actually fit there. Uh, and I think it would make it for a much more secure loader. See, this one's not. Ah, there. Now it's engaged. It's all the way down. So what I did, <coughs> here, that's what you want. You want, you want the snap like that. If it's not there and it's not clicked in properly, you got problems. So again, what I did is I actually scraped some of the paint off <coughs> and then I kind of manhandled it in place quite a few times just to make sure that this wouldn't pop off as I'm doing my loader work and uh, it's working out really good so that's not a problem not an issue whatsoever um, and then these this big humongous pivot bracket on the bottom you can take the loader off without a bucket but it's not a good idea when I put it onto the tractor, I was manhandling it by hand and I didn't have a bucket on obviously and it's a bit of a pain. So I think the best is to just follow the, uh, the recommendations on that and to um, put a bucket on. All right, so the last point I want to address is every loader comes with one of these your best friend now in maintenance or pre-operating checks uh, it tells you to go through all these kinds of things and then I think we have where is the maintenance operating the loader attachments instruction service blah 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 second page maintenance daily check lubricating and 50 hours of operation retightening hardware of the loader retightening hardware of the loader this is super 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 important on my install video um, basically showing how torquing the bolts and I actually had one bolt that uh, gave up the goose on me because I'm supposed to torque it at 105 um, foot pounders and she decided that that was too much for her so i uh, ended up having to buy a couple of other bolts and, and doing the uh the whole thing so you've got your uh your specifications and all your points and all everything and then the rear ballast yeah i need to get in on that <laughs> yeah i don't have any ballast on mine uh where are you i think it said 35 maintenance okay so the bolts these guys retightening of hardware loader after 20 to 30 hours of initial loader operation retighten all the nuts and bolts required to work as follows blah <clears throat> so the m14s which are um, number uh, 
Do, do, do. Let's see. We got the bolts here, so five and four. Uh, four here. So those are the 12 millimeter. So they go to uh, 66. The M14s, which are number five, which are go underneath and then the front and everything, they go to 108. So I was saying when I did my initial install, a couple of these, well, one of them gave up the goose and I ended up torquing them to 100. Um, and then you're supposed to do a check. So what I decided to do on mine on the initial install, uh, first of all, when you do an install, if your dealer did it for you, they have to make sure that there's no dirt or junk underneath the pieces when you put it together. Second part is, uh, Kubota actually did not paint behind the mating surfaces, which is a good idea. But the tractor's painted, so as the loader works back and forth, the paint is going to wear away, and that's why we got to go back and redo these uh, torquings, retorques. So after the first 20 and 30, <clears throat> and then it's saying to checking the torque and the bolts of the nuts on the frame every 50 hours. That's a lot, but it says it in there. So, I mean, it's, it's for a reason. They've had issues in the past, so you go through and you do your torque uh, converting over here. So what I decided to do on mine is to mount everything freehand, well, freehand, torque it. And then um, uh, when I do the retorque, I'm gonna do a retorque probably in about 10 hours, or, or probably earlier, really. And then when I do the 50, if I get to uh, to that fairly shortly, I'm going to Loctite the bolts in <clears throat> with blue Loctite. So then they won't loosen off. Everything's going to be worn in and I should not have any problems. I will recheck them periodically, maybe once a year or whatever. But this is the kind of thing, I mean, this isn't a car. It's It needs more maintenance than a car. A car, step in, drive off. I mean, who the hell checks their oil in the morning before taking off? It, it's fine, but this is a tractor. You gotta treat it like a tractor, or else it'll uh, it'll wind up in divorce court or something. It's going through the manual here, and I I love these. Uh, my Goldwing manual is actually of a, of an equaler quality and really well made. Um, and, and I love the cartoons. Look at look at that. I mean, that's some actual effort was put into this manual. And uh, <laughs> look at the little tractor. I love it. Piling up big mountain here. It's great. Good stuff. So it's showing you how to dig, how to operate. It, it really, really well made. Uh, talking about the skid steer. I don't know if you have any hydraulic attachments. Going through here on the forks. This is a big one. If ever you have a leak, do not... Mechanics people tend to go around with the hand trying to touch where the leak's going to be. If you get oil injected in your skin, bad deal. Okay, there's lots of videos on YouTube about that. Basically, usually ends up in some sort of amputation. Amputation. Do not check for leaks with your fingers. Not a good idea. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to actually get into. I had a specific point here. Okay. <clears throat> Adjusting the height of the lifting stand. If the stand does not hook and fold successfully, readjust height of lifting stand referring to the following steps. So this is basically what I did. Lift it up, dump the bucket to the max, go here, adjust. And <clears throat> there's actually, if the roller stand does not disengage and the stand hooks, lifts both sides. So if it won't unhook, it's basically telling you to go to the uh, the lever rod and to adjust that bad boy. So that would be this guy. So you undo the pin and then turn it. Whichever way she needs to be turned, and you're golden. So yeah, if your dealer did not give you the manual, or if you did the manly thing and burned it, I uh, highly recommend getting another copy. And uh, basically it's saying here, so it, it should be when you lift the bucket up and the arms come up, or dump the bucket, I should say. It should lift on it. Eh, I'm going to say it. It should rest on those two little stops. 
And then when you move the lever, get link, it goes forward, goes in place. So yeah, we've got your general torque specification. Good stuff. Love the Kubota uh, manual. Very well made. Good job. So that's going to be it for today. Going to go out and uh, actually play with my tractor. Might <coughs> film that a little bit. I uh, wish everybody a good day. See you later.